So today we'll start with Al Kalimat Al Jadida. Okay, so the new words. Um, honestly, I don't want to spend too much time here because I think for each of these words, we have uh, studied them, we talked about them in the text. I gave a detailed uh, description of these words and meaning of these words. Hey? I also mentioned that when you memorize what you need to do, honestly, if you haven't done yet, is actually write them down in a piece of paper or if you have this one printed out and then, you know, you write your notes. Some of the one of the ways that I want you guys I want you guys to memorize is not like test them. You know, I mentioned these things uh, many times, because remember the book wants you to learn everything as a vocabulary at this point, meaning he will learn touch the mirror as she gathers, like you know this way instead of thinking that ta is for she. You know, you understand what I mean? Al mil the salt. You know, but I want you to, I think you guys understand a lot more than that. So you should, uh, for the verbs, you should memorize, you should learn the past and present, third person singular. I'm not going to go through all of them. There's no way I'm doing that because uh, you should uh, uh, go back to the text and find these words. Here, you don't have to memorize with alif lam, al milh. You can just milhun. And when you remove alif lam, of course, you have to put adanwin. Right, uh, I think uh, all of these words are there. And for example, here you see sakana, right? So what what uh, the book is trying to do? It's give it it wants you to memorize as a vocab. So that means you would memorize this one as uh, he he poured us or he gave us to drink. So, you know, instead of understanding what is Saka and what is uh, uh, Na, because some of the things even I cannot explain right now because it would be way too much. Uh, so, for example, this one you might just memorize Sakana. It is Na is for us. Ja'alna. Okay. So, uh, Ja'alna. So, see, you're kind of seeing the pattern. So, you have Nun Alif and Nun Alif, which means us. Any question from here? Uh, from the look of it, I can guarantee you that we have covered every single word in the text. And then we have we have this exercise. I think uh, we always skip them because this is easy. It's uh, showing you uh, the dal, right? Gaurak uh, and all of this. Now make sure you know these uh, these words as well. I don't know if we had. I'm pretty sure we have dik dub. Uh, did we have them? What is dik? Did we have this word? I'm not totally sure. It's hen. Uh, it's like the chicken, but I think the chicken will be the judge. And dub, what is dub? I think bear. Right? Now. Uh, and then we have uh, dal, right? Dal and dal. Anyway, so we start with at the dribat, which are the exercise. Uh, then we have at awal awal the first exercise uh, it says iqra you know what iqra means right to read um, so let us read it says ya fatimatu jahizi al maida da right somebody if you want to translate so okay so jahiz is not gather jahiz would be what it's the same thing with adda, adda, which is uh, to prepare. So uh, the reason why I wrote adda, uh, because these both of these words you have in this book, uh, in this lesson, and both of them mean the same thing. So you should memorize them together. And you, you don't know how uh, frequent these words are. Fatima, please prepare the food. Yes, somebody is giving al because if this is fine. What is al maida? It's not a taam. It is what? Table, yes, we need dinner table. Fatima, prepare the dinner table, right? Now, so so the uh, what they're trying to show you here is the sentence structure. So what they will do is that they will just change a few of the things and uh, make you get used to speak uh, or use this kind of structure. So you say, ya Fatima or ya Zainab, 
Ya Muhammad. Then you ask them something to do. So for example, here, everything is same. I think this is exactly same except for Fatima is Zainab. So that's very easy. Ya uh, Khadijatu, U'iddi. See, uh, it's the same word, U'iddi, U'iddi al-ma'ida. So this will be Dhamma. So prepare the dinner table, same, exactly. So that's why I want you guys to uh, know, and you see they're even using it same context, right? So they're also using it in the same context. So Jahaza and Adda are the same meaning. Jahaza yujahizu, right? Remember, you have to know these things. Um, make sure if you don't know these patterns, you go back to the previous lessons and write them down on a piece of paper. You know, the past and the present. If you can, as an exercise, you should try to also uh, add the command verb. Some of the command verbs would be easy. Some of them are a little bit tricky. Now, so here's saying, yeah, Aisha. See, anything you're asking someone to do, uh, the polite way is that you ask, you call them by name. And, uh, right? So you say, yeah, Aisha tu da'i al-ta'am. So, yeah, Aisha, put uh, the food. We have uhdir. Uhdiri, what is Uhdiri? This will also be a Dhamma here. Uhdiri is to bring Alma. And of course, you understand why the Fatha is here because these are the object. Now, it's just a simple sen sentence structure. I think the primary thing is that to know when you address someone, you call them using Ya, and then you just use the command verb. And of course, if you're telling someone masculine, you just remove the Ya, right? You just remove the, uh, yeah, for example, here would be da. Ya Muhammad, da ta'am. Put the food. Now, for the next one, we have mada uhdiru al-ana ya ummi. Anyone wants to give it a shot? Uh, bring it now or later. Okay, so you, you got the bring and now uh, is excellent. So these two parts are excellent. Uh, so the only thing is uh, is the mother part. So what is mother? Mother is what, right? So it, it brings um, we use mother for verbs and ma for the nouns, like we say mahada, right? For the uh, for the nouns, and we use mother for the verbs. There's a little bit of uh, subtleties here, but uh, by and large, that's the case. The mother would be making it into a statement, into a question. What should I bring now? Right? You understand? So here, uh, it's the same thing. He's uh, now saying to Ya Abi, right? Mother uhdirul an ya um. It's the same thing, right? Uh, then mother akrawul an. What should I read now? Mother naakulu al yom. You can just say what we will eat today. You know, because remember the present tense verb we use in Arabic for the future as well, right? Present tense verb we use for the future. So because it's a question, something that uh, hasn't happened yet, uh, you should actually translate as in the future. We can say uh, translate as what will we eat today? Okay. Now. So we have, okay, so we have mother ada'u ala al-ma'idati ya ummi. I think all of these uh, would be simple, but I want you to know the sentence structure. How do you ask someone about some action? What should I do? See, only thing, uh, uh, only thing you will change, this is a very common phrase you might want to say, what should we do? Yeah, so what is the verb to do? Yes, good. So, you, so the yeah, main thing you have to know is the mother, you will be asking mother. And the verb to do is would be what? Fa'ala. Yeah, so you can say naf'alu. Okay, or you can say afalu. Depends on uh, what you want to say. Mada naf'alu or mada uh, mada af'alu. Then you can say al-yom uh, or you can say whatever gadan, right? And then you can say ya uh, whoever you are addressing, right? So you see, this is very, very important. As long as you know any verb, you can just ask, should I do this? What should I do? You know, all of these things. Now, so very good to sentence structure. Uh, make sure you know how to not only, uh, you know, know the meaning, also how to use them. 
Jade, we have a tadib with thani, uh, the second exercise, it is iqra. So this is your, uh, you know, sound exercise. We always skip them. It has to do, with th this one, they're trying to sh show you the difference between the sin and shin, sahir and shahir. Okay, so uh, I'll skip that. Uh, the next exercise at the Thalith, we have Ajib. What is Ajib? Ajib means answer. Okay. Ajaba yujibu Ajib. It means to answer. So we have some questions uh, there from the text. Okay. They're from the text. So I might have to go back to the text. So let's see what's, uh, maybe I will, I'll do a few of them. I don't want to do all of them leave something for you guys but uh let's see the first one says mata tatanawalul usratu tu'amal iftar guys i don't want to translate at this point especially uh, some kind of meaning should be floating around and flirting in your mind mata tatanawalul usratu tu'amal iftar what does go in your head when you hear that phrase or sentence or question. Hmm? Food of iftar, yes, that's good. So ta'am al iftar, it, uh, uh, and what, how would you translate this one even uh, more? Because remember, idafa, this is perfect what you said. This is, uh, you're translating as idafa. Idafa does two things, right? It can uh, provide a positive phrase, just like what you're doing. It also does what? It also, uh, mix up a new brand new word so idafa just like in uh, in english we use compound nouns to make it into a new word uh, we don't have any compound nouns in uh, in arabic we use idafa so yes so you will just a breakfast guys just breakfast tamal iftar is breakfast when will we have morning meals excellent yes so yes instead of we we want to say usra family when will the family have the morning meal yes okay so very good isn't if the dinner no it's not if they dinner no 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 if that is not dinner the reason why we have if that at the maghrib time is why we have been fasting so we haven't had our breakfast so you know instead of having breakfast morning because we're fasting that's why we're having our breakfast uh in the uh, you know maghrib time so we, to get the answer, we kind of have to go back. So answer will be Sabah. Okay. So uh, here you can uh, right now, I you know, it's fine if you just give a very simple answer like Fis Sabah. That's fine. Fis uh, Sabah. Okay. Or you can also extend the whole thing. You can say tatanawalul usratu fi sabah, or tatanawalul usratu taamal iftari fi sabah. You know, you can you can go as you know, you can do medium size, small size, or the large size. You know, it's, it's your call. But for now, I think a simple answer would be sufficient. Uh, then the question is: Min aina ahdarat ahdarat Fatima tu? This one I think I know, I remember where she got it from. Hmm? She got it from where? And here's the hint. Muthallaj. Where would somebody get anything Muthallaj from? You can say Minathallaja. Okay, Minathallaja. And then we have Mada Ahdarat Fatima. What did uh, Fatima bring? So here he she brought al khubz wal milh. Okay. So you know you can just give one or two. It's fine. You can say al khubz. Or you can say what else did uh, al milh? You know? Or you can also say Daura Kalma al Musallaj. That's fine. This phrase makes sure you understand the mother and a verb. Now, Aina jalasatil um. Yes, so where did uh, the mom uh, sit? Yes, 
Okay, exactly. So why did she sit? Okay, Jalasid al Um ala yasaril ab. So she sat uh, the left of the father. Okay, uh, you can just write here ala yasaril ab. Okay. Kam tabakan li kulli wahidin fil usrati. Remember and uh, don't forget some of the grammar uh, things that we learned in the past and they're coming back and you cannot uh, forget them. Uh, the way we ask about numbers. So here he's saying, kam tabakan. So how many dishes, right? Or the plates. Li kulli wahidin for each one fil usra. What is the answer? This one word answer. Uh, actually here you can just say tabakan. But you can also say wahidan. Actually, this one will be marfu. It will be tabakun, tabakun, wahidun. Here, if you say tabakun, it is very clear that one dish. You understand? Just quick reminder that remember the number one and two, we use them as an adjective. Okay. And now someone tell me, how do we use number three to ten? Idaf, excellent. That's good. Matahana waktul ghada. Matahana, remember we talked about Hana. When is the time for the lunch? Okay, so here, uh, look what it says. It says, Asatul ana thaniyatu wa nisf ba'da dhuhr. Hana waktul ghada. So that means this is the time, and that's when uh, the time for the lunch. We can say fi, uh, or you can just use it as an adverb. Both ways would be fine. You can say fi asati asaniya ti wa nis. Right? To 30. Make sense? Mada qalat Fatima tu li abiha. What did Fatima say to her father? Yes, yes, very good, exactly. When he said mother, what did she say? And how? Do, why we're saying she? Because the verb. So uh, please get used to this mother and how to use it with the verbs. And li abiha. So the qala, when you say qala, qala always goes with li. In English, we would probably translate to what did she say to the father. When you say to, you might thinking ila, you know, ila means to. But... Uh, the verbs and their connected prepositions, this is are very tricky. So you have to know them. If you don't know them, uh, it's going to be a big problem. But in the beginning, uh, just learn them just like uh, here. So when you want to say said to someone, you will say kala and the li. For example, I said, I told you, kultulaka, au kultulaki, la ki, for to you. You understand? So what did she say? Okay, so she said, Hada ta'amun ladid. You can just say, Qalat. Then you can say, Hada, you know, ta'amu, ta'amun ladid. Qalat and then comma. Mada taqulu ba'da tanawalid ta'am. Now, because of the taqulu, we don't know the context, right? So we can say they, meaning maybe the family. So what do they say? Yeah, what, what do they say after the meal? So, and you know what they say, right? Uh, this dua, inshallah, you memorize them or you're memorizing them. Jayat, so um, uh, let's start and see how far we can do. And then we'll continue from the next time. So, hatadrib rabe is the fourth exercise. It's akmil. Akmil means complete. Uh, the first one, it says, al-um. And then we have a blank. at fil matbakh. What is matbakh? We had this before, matbakh. This matbakh. Uh, matbakh, close. Uh, you're close. Uh, the, the word comes from it. So it is kitchen. and But you're close in terms of cook because uh, the tabakh is to cook. Tabakha yadbukh, uh, which is, means to cook. So here we have a blank. What does she do to the food uh, in the kitchen? You can say tadbukhu, uh, if you know this word tadbukhu, she cooks the food in the kitchen. Uh, that's fine. You can say, uh, you'll see tadbukhu. Tadbukhu. You see? So the verb is coming right from here. 
But you can also say the verb that we got is uh, the prepare. To iddu. To iddu. To iddu ta'ama fil madbakh. Okay, so the second one is al bintu tada'u ta'ama ala what? Al bintu tada'u ta'ama ala what? Can the doer come before verb? Yes, doer come before verb. Yes, of course. But um, there's a technicality here. Uh, this is not the level for this course. Uh, but if the doer comes before the verb, then what happens is that the verb pronoun becomes the technical doer. You know, that this is a, this is not for this class. But here for our, for this class level, yes, we will say al-um is the doer. But technically it would be, this ta would be, the pronoun would be the doer, which refers to the al-um. You understand? But uh, this is not the discussion uh, we want to have here. Uh, yeah, it's, it would be the same thing. It doesn't matter. The um, tat, book, both of them would be the same thing. The same situation. You have the uh, al-bint here. You could have said tada'u al-bint. The context is the same. For this level, we will say al-bint is the doer of this verb. But in, in advanced or proper Arabic grammar perspective, al-bint is not the subject. Al-bint is muqtada. It is, is the subject of the nominative sentence, not the subject of the verb. Subject of the verb is hiya, which is hidden. Ta. This hiya goes back to the bin. You see, that's why we cannot have this kind of discussion in this class. To place something down the car, place the food upon alal ma'id. Yes, excellent, good. Alal, we can say alal ma'ida. Okay, so here you have to put your hamza uh, on the ya. Okay, uh, we cannot say al ma'ida. This would be imla uh, mistake, meaning spelling. Uh, I don't know if it, we would call it spelling mistake because we have a hamza, it would be the writing mistake, actually, we we'll say. Okay, so the, don't worry about this kind of mistake. I have no problem with this kind of mistake, but your spelling is fine. Okay, yes, you can definitely say that the daughter is putting the food on the dinner table. Okay, so we have jalas al ab wa. We have a blank afra dul usrati. Okay, so this would be that a uh, little bit tricky sentence that we had before. So jalas al uh, ab. So the father said. And now translate this part for me. Afradul uh, Usra. We translate it as what? The members of the family, right? So the father sat and, and around him are the family members. So this would be a little bit tricky, but this is a very good sentence structure. So you should get used to it. Even if you didn't know how to make it, but make sure you get used to this kind of a sentence. Wa hawlahu. Hawlahu. And around him are the family members. 